Hello reformers and welcome back. Now when we left off we just lost Maris Castle because apparently our Mithridian allies were unable to defend against some very weak vassals from the Swadians. Very strange. Now as you can see I've actually come back to Mithridius here. There's a very good reason for that. They kind of made peace. Yeah. The Mithridians kind of made peace with the Swadians and there's no more war going on at the moment. So, what else is there to do but to do some tournaments? Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to be doing tournaments this entire episode, obviously, that, you know, we've kind of done those. But I thought I'd just start the episode with a bit of a tournament just so you can, you know, get a bit of an update on what's been going on. I've been... Progressing quite a bit off screen, but I haven't been able to get any kind of resolution for the current stalemate that is currently going on. So Yeah, it's a bit a bit worrying suffice it to say a bit worrying because now we have to be very very careful with well basically everything because we can't do anything about warlike stuff and we can't really do much else. So it's basically just us trying to earn some money, I suppose. That's literally all we can do right now. And what I wouldn't mind doing actually is maybe progressing our village a little bit. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do a couple of tournaments, hopefully. I don't know how effective I'm actually going to be at doing the tournaments because obviously you got to travel to each of the places first and all that sort of stuff, but hopefully we'll end up with a little bit of cash and I'll be able to hopefully invest that into our village and hopefully that village will get a good amount of progression and hopefully that's going to result in us, you know, having something a little bit more to do. Alright, so as you can see we've arrived at our village and I think it might be a nice idea to build a school here. Now what's going to happen with the school is it's going to give us one relation every single month with the village. So if we, you know, continue to be a part of the Mithridian Empire, which uh, is looking quite frustrating at the moment because they... <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take for them to declare war against someone else. Hopefully it's going to be pretty soon. Anyway, let's build this. This is going to cost 7,500 in the treasury in the village, actually. There's about 20,000 florins. I don't know where that came from, but apparently they, they made it up. Anyway, let's do that. Okay, so well, that was it? All right, doesn't have 20,000 florins? What? Okay, apparently they only had about 10,000 and I misread that or something, but there you go. So that is done. Is, is it? Is it done? <laughs> Okay, that's apparently done. So as you can see, we have a population of 52. We have 20 farmers, 18 woodcutters, 4 stonecutters, and 10 blacksmiths. Don't know if that's any good, but hopefully it's going to work out quite nicely for us. And there's the treasury. I demand my salary for all efforts. I want to add personal gold to the treasury. Let's add 1,000. Does it give us anything? It doesn't seem to give us any relation or anything like that. All right. Well, at least I updated you on the school being built. Alright, so I thought considering we only have this one village and it would probably be a good idea to get a little bit more relation than the school can provide, let's do some training fights, shall we? Yeah, let's do some training fights. By the way, my text box is still bugged. I don't think I pressed anything and I have restarted the game, obviously, but yeah, it, it seems like it's just literally the script error that is causing that to consistently disappear. And I think there is a way to actually make script errors disappear, so maybe we can do that. But for now, we're just going to have to wait the eight hours every single time to train the peasants. That was only one of them. Oh, oh my, three of them. Okay, this is going to be a little bit more difficult. I like the new architecture in this area, I've got to say. I think that's pretty nice. It's nice to see new things, of course. And let's just make sure that I don't lose this. That would be embarrassing. Because we're, we're supposed to be training these fellows, and we are diggory dagnabbit dagnabbit. So, <laughs> yes, we're supposed to be pretty good. Okay, so yeah, let's just get a couple more peasants, thank you very much. I've already increased our relation with the village by a small percentage, and hopefully it's going to just increase and increase and increase as time goes on. I want this village to be really, really good, and hopefully I'll also be able to get a good amount of money. Oh yeah, by the way, I did complete a couple of tournaments so far. Well, that was easy. A couple of tournaments. 
gained enough to buy another one of those great mansion things. Not the most expensive, but the second most expensive thing. So we should be gaining a pretty decent amount of money every single week now. So I'm very, very happy with that. But yeah, as I say, there's not much to do in, in the way of battles. So yes, it's just, there's just not much to do. No, you can't really do much about that, you know? As a vassal, specifically, you can't really do much about it. And I mean, if you've played Warband, you know that the AI can be rather, mm, you know, a little bit prickly and, you know, about these kinds of things. So, the Elder begs that you organize your newly trained militia and face them, the bandits. Well, let us do this, and hopefully I'll be given my own equipment. Yes, I will. Oh, very nice. Yes, I will be given my own equipment. All right, so let's do this. Let us tackle the bandits. This is going to be, I think, either extremely easy or extremely surprisingly difficult. Let's see which one it is. It seems surprisingly easy. Ah, come on. Die, please. Diggory's like, oh, yes, you must die. Because reformers said so. Yes. He's an idiot, don't you know? What? How dare you? How, what, 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 what is Diggory saying here? Why is he, why is he betraying me in front of the, in front of the audience? What is that? In front of the viewers. That is terrible. Anyway, let's see if we can do a little bit of extra damage to these runners. Yes. Take that. I know you can't run anymore, Diggory. What? How dare you? Oh. Yeah, he's outraged. He's, he's left. He's gone. He's out of the building. He's absolutely gone. Anyway, there you go. So that was, that was pretty easy. That was pretty easy. Why aren't they all charging in, by the way? Why are my people not charging in and killing all of these interlopers? Die, interloper! You should not be here. There we go. This is a really, really good quest, by the way. I personally feel like training the peasants is one of the best ways of gaining relation with a village because it's fun and it uses a little bit of time. So if you're waiting for your weekly wages or whatever, then that's great. It also gives you some uh, trainer skill, which is quite nice as well. Alright, so the bandits are broken. Those few who remain run off with their tails between their legs, terrified of the peasants and their new champion. Oh, did you hear that, Diggory? You're actually doing a good job. You shut your face, sir. Uh, he's, he's not very happy with me, is he? The villagers have little left in the way of wealth after their ordeal, but I, they offer you all they can find to show their gratitude. I'm going to refuse, because we need those we need those relations. Look at that. Not those kinds of relations. Thank you very much. Yes. Anyway, let's uh, let's recruit a couple more, shall we? And uh, let's see if we can get a couple more tasks. Oh, flower! You need seven bags. Wow, you are uh, not particularly happy about that. Suffice it to say. Anyway, let's. Uh, I want to manage my village. Let's place some more buildings, shall we? How? I mean, they have five thousand five hundred. How did they get five thousand five hundred? I haven't done anything since the last time you saw the treasury when it had 2,900, because I actually put 1,000 in there. So that's very strange. I don't know how it goes up and down all the time, but anyway. Uh, well, stone walls are absolutely useless for me right now. The Catholic Church might actually be really nice, because that's going to actually give us 100 prestige, as you can see, and it does make the people much happier. So, yeah, not entirely sure how we can do that. And... Oh, eight unemployed villagers. Nice. Okay, so let's get some stone cutters, shall we? Let's get ten of those. And then let's get a couple more woodcutters to just even that out a little bit. Because, you know, we got to even it out, don't we? Okay, so new tax level. Let's just make sure it's on very low. And then I guess we can... Whoa, a Mithrid... Wait a minute. Mithridian pikeman? Yeah. Thank you very much for the... Oh, yes, they're grinding my gears, aren't they? Okay, so we have 20,000 florins remaining. I need some flour. So I guess I'm going to go off and get some. Oh, of course, of course. Okay, so I've literally just traveled to Zendar, and now I am being attacked by some... Okay, some dying people, apparently. Anyway, yeah, these are Cathar extremists, as we know. And apparently, blunt weapons are insanely good against them. I would have expected my abilities to kind of fail me here, but apparently not. Apparently not. Very nice. Yeah, so I was just going to go to Zendar because they are technically the trading merchant faction. And I thought, if anyone has flour, then surely they do. So hopefully that's going to happen. Oh, yes. By the way, I should probably mention that I have not given up on the Aztec plan. We're going to go back to the Aztecs 
when we're a little bit stronger and when we've gained a little bit of land and a little bit of territory and maybe when we've eliminated one faction on the mainland of Calradia. We have two bags. I got one fine flour bag in Mithridian, Mithridius. And yeah, we'll just buy some well-made bread and all that sort of stuff. There we go. That sounds good to me. And uh, I guess I'll just head on to greener pastures, I suppose. Let's get some meat as well. Okay, so I've come all the way to the ruins of Uxkal, because for those of you that didn't watch the original series of this mod way, way back, you won't have seen this, but it might be kind of nice for those of you that are new to the series and the mod in general, for you to see this anyway. Here lie the remnants of a great town famous of its walls, noted because of its military reputation. Travelers tell you of a war in the past, namely the Thirteen Years' War, which left Uxkal in ruins. In 1276, the Kingdom of Rodox invaded Swadian lands until they reached the very walls of Uxkal. King Harlaus II, the Bold, was fighting rebels on the banks of the Sweda River nearby Haringoth Castle. When he got notified of this great invasion, it was too late. Uxkal had fallen. The king immediately recruited troops and went to Viancourt Castle to prepare for a siege. The siege of Uxkal lasted for two years. The Rodox didn't give up. This left Uxkal very depopulated and devastated. A traitor opened the gates for the Swadians, and they entered the town. Within some hours, the town was back in Swadian hands after two years of siege. The Rodox sent reinforcements, but they were too late. And again, the town of Uxkal was under siege. Technological advancements brought new and enormous trebuchets. These could break down the Great Walls, but also destroy many buildings in the town. King Harlaus II, the Bold, ordered to open the gates and send out his best troops with him first. In this battle of the Red Fields, he would find his end, leaving the kingdom in chaos. A monument marks the place of his death. His sword, allegedly, is still lost. Many people started a search, but without luck. Perhaps you can find it, or is it gone forever? The Rodoks won the battle, but at a high cost. Many Rodok noble knights died in this bitter fight. Blood colored the battlefield red. That's why it's called the Red Fields. The town of Uxkar would pay the price for this bitter, hard fight. Rodok soldiers entered, plundered, and razed the town. After this, the remaining people left their homes and moved to the countryside or other towns. Uxkal was no more. Treasure hunters have searched for the sword of King Harlas II for centuries. Stories became myths, myths became legends, and this riddle is mentioned in the same breath as Uxkal. Under a broken bridge you shall go, a tree to your right is all you'll know. From a corner of the ruined city's walls, you will get to where the world's stalls. To your right will be a patch, which your eye it will catch. A mound you will see, unless you're blind. There will be the treasure you came to find. Let's do this. Let's try and find King Harlow's sword. I actually already know where it is, because isn't there a little bit of a glint? I seem to remember that there was a, a, a glinting mechanic where there would be like a sparkle, like a little flash in the distance. And, uh, you know, the, well, we already know what the, the kind of, the riddle is. Basically, here's a bridge, and you got to go along the river as far as I'm aware, and it's basically over there, I think, in that, uh, why don't I get my horse here, by the way? I think it would make uh, quite a bit of sense to give me a horse, considering there's a lot of, a lot of space to cover. Wow, this is... Wow, that's, that's pretty creepy. Huh. That wasn't here the last time. That certainly wasn't here. But yeah, I think it is actually over there. Do you see that? Do you see that little that little place over there? I think that might be where it is. Alright, so yeah, I was somewhat correct about seeing this little glinting thing in the distance. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the sword is around here somewhere. So where could it be? Can you, can you see it? Can you see it on your screens right now? Because I'm actually pretty impressed by this banner. This is one of the first animated banners I've actually ever seen in a mod for Warband. Because in general, this is pretty difficult to do as far as I'm aware. But that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. As you can see, it is 
repeating the animation, uh, you know, every so often, but I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, here's the sword. <laughs> there it is. Yes. It's right there in the little bit of foliage. Yes. Exactly. Okay, so there it is. Pretty nice. It's actually a pretty good sword for early game. And if you can sell it for a huge amount of money as well, then that's all the better, even though you don't technically need money at the moment. Yeah, by the way, I have all the flour that I require. So let's go back to our village and hope that the village elder is happy with us. Or maybe I'm going to be too late. Who knows? All right, so our village elder should be pretty happy with us right now. I bought you seven packs of flour. My good lord, you have saved us from hunger and desperation. It's flour. Seriously now, come on now, I could have given you much better things, why didn't you ask for better things? Okay, well anyway, the village of Atheon will not forget what you have done for us, and now we have 20 relation with him, which is pretty fantastic. Do you not need anything else, are you sure? Ah, oh, okay, apparently he doesn't need anything else. We have 8 more villagers. Well, actually I thought we... No, we did. We don't. We It grew by eight villagers. Yeah, it's kind of cool that it gives you the growth rates as well. I think that's pretty nice. Anyway, should we place some more buildings? We can't really do that, but I do have quite a bit of money, so I could technically get a stockpile. What is this? The village can store more goods. Okay. Should we, should we do that? Okay, let's do that. I'm going to add 5,000... And then we're going to place a stockpile. Can I not do that? Yep, I can do that. Awesome. So there you go. I've done that. So now, what actually happens here? Am I supposed to actually bring the required things to the village? Or are they just going to build it? Because they haven't told me either way. So I'm a bit confused by that. It doesn't seem like there is anything to do. I'm pressing B as well, by the way, for build menu, because B is build menu when you're in the colonies and, uh, you know, exploring the new world and things. Ah, I think this is it. Yes, the drafting table. I think that's where we need to go. There's also a gallows over there. Well, that's, <laughs> that's great. Okay, so let's... Use the drafting table. Hello, drafting table. Order peasants to carry resources to the construction site. You order your peasants to bring 20 units of timber. Okay. This is easy enough. 10 units of stone. Okay, we don't have that much stone. And one unit of tools. Oh, okay, we got... We, oh, there we go. Oh, okay, they do it in 10s. Right, okay. So that's that. Finish construction. And... Okay. Is, is this where the... Is this where the school's going to be, or... I'm actually unsure. Is it going to appear? Because the scaffolding and various things have... Oh! Is it appearing? It, yep, yep, yep it is. Ooh, that's cool. In real time as well. I mean, <laughs> I say that like it's some kind of magic, which technically it is in Warband, because every single thing in Warband you need to go out of the scene and then go back in the scene and so on and so forth so they're obviously going to build this i don't know how long it's going to take but that's that should be pretty cool i'm i'm happy with that all right so i made a bit of an error with my peasants and sending them around to do certain things because as you can see warband uh, you know how it is when you're ordering npcs to do things they sometimes get a bit stuck and so this is actually the stockpile not the school. The school is over there, and I think we'll probably show that in the next episode. And hopefully, the Mithridian Empire will have declared war against someone. Otherwise, I'll probably just do a little bit of money gathering, and hopefully get prepared for it. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.